We have M.M. Wogugo this morning on Parenting. Now, uh, today, we're going to shed some light on intentional parenting. Over the last 15 years, she has lived her passion of transforming individuals and organizations via managerial skills, providing tailor made solutions that have instilled a mind shift, thereby making people more productive and happier at work and in their personal lives. Hello, MM. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm very well, and you? I am great. Is this your first? This should be your first time in 2020, right? On TV, on TVC. Um, yes, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> welcome back. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> the last quarter, I say Happy New Year. Okay, so how are you doing? I'm very well. Are okay, you? good. So we're talking intentional parenting now and all of that. What are your thoughts about intentional parenting? Um, it's a very broad topic. For me, it is. Um, for you to be intentional as a parent, you first of all have to know what's your vision because you have to have a vision for, um, for the areas that you want to be intentional about. So you have to first of all identify the areas and then for me, I, I'll, I'll say take notes of those areas, write them down. If it, if it, if it has to do with financial intelligence, um, you're trying to pass down values, you want to teach them hard work and integrity, you want to make sure that they are more independent, they're not people that are dependent on you, or if you have areas in your life, your personal life that you've seen that you would love to correct, then you have to be very, very intentional. For, for a parent to be intentional, the parent, first of all, has to be intentional with their own personal life. You cannot okay. be an intentional parent if you're not taking care of your own self hmm. and all those areas that you're trying to ask and, to, and be intentional about with your children. So you right. first be intentional with yourself before you can be intentional with your children. Okay, MM, I have a case study here. I want to go into two friends I have, their personal lives and uh, how they deal with, in this case, their sons. Now, um, when you have to deal with a son, now this is a particular son who energy, you know, as a young kid, energy, there's so much energy, they don't listen to you. You tell them, sit down, they don't sit down. You tell them, stand up, they don't stand up. They want to, you know, you, you threaten to even beat them. So you find out that you have these parents who are threatening and almost every time, over the course of a day, you've threatened the kid like 30 times. They get so used to you saying, I'll beat you, I'll beat you, and you don't do anything or you tap them on something. And then he goes on and yeah. on. And then some of them say, okay, oh, he's still a kid. He doesn't know what he's doing. But then they go around destroying stuff and all of that. How do you deal with such a kid, such a kid in that particular scenario? And for that, for that particular scenario, what we do as parents is um, you have to take out something that, um, you know, so, sometimes we tell them, um, you go on timeout. That's very, very short. But if you take out something for a week or three days, and then within those three days, have conversations with them. So have a meeting, sit down, have dialogue. Like, okay, this is the reason why we're taking this away from you. We want you to understand that there are consequences for your behavior. So what's happening with that particular parent is that they're actually um, threatening the child right there on the spot and they don't do anything. So the threat with no action. So the mm. child keeps you know, doing the same thing over and over because the child already knows that they're just going to threaten me or they're going to smack me right now and then I'll be done with it. But when the child is deprived of something that they really, really like, they begin to understand that there are real consequences to their behavior. Okay, you're not going to your friend's house for this holiday, or I'm not paying for this particular lesson. You have a home teacher instead of going to a summer class where you have your friends, and maybe maybe the boy is a teenager. You're going to see all your friends, and all of you are going to really show off your your clothes and all of that. You know, teenagers would like to that share to their friends, and you say, no, this particular time we're going to have a private home teacher. That's like a punishment, even if. You know, to another person, it might not. Might, I mean, it's the same thing. Or you, you take out something. Maybe they are. Um, yeah, device. I mean, what, what, what if it's a phone or okay, what if it's a case? Take it out for days, like a week. Let it be very obvious that something is happening. The child has to know that I've, I've done something bad, and this is the reason why my parents are taking this away from me. Because sometimes we, we like to, we like quick fixes, and those that doesn't work because the quick fix can get you the result in the moment, but doesn't change the character of the child. Hmm. And what if it's, what if it's a case a whereby? All right, what if it's a case whereby the kid, two, three years old, they can't have a coherent conversation with you? You made mention of sitting down, sitting them down to talk to them. Yeah, okay, yeah. let's say two years, three years. Oh, they, 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 can't, they, they, they can't maintain a coherent conversation in that yeah. particular case. So, yeah, that happens, that happens. What, I, I, what, what most parents don't, they, they really take for granted is that they don't go for counseling. They don't, they don't think they need a coach. And for me, even as a, as a life coach, I still talk to other um, parent coaches who are also older with experience as well. 
and they tell me things like you have to have different kinds of tones your voice they need to know when you're serious they need to know when you are you're oh. into authority so mm. you talk to them at different times and then when you affirm mm. when you affirm that this you cannot do that they know that tone okay and they respond to that tone mm. when you have all the time you, say, you sound the same way they cannot differentiate when you're serious or when you're not serious and that's like i said for a two three years old because i also had it i mean i have a daughter and at that age you need to be consistent i think the problem is consistency most parents are tired from work and it happens to me as well it happened to me sometimes my husband tell me don't give up keep you know reaffirming what you said and then this is the mode of punishment you know let the person know that they are wrong and do not waste time to um, to, to to reaffirm that i do not support what you're doing don't hmm. give them too much time or, you know, 10 minutes, you're still arguing. That also happens because then at that age, they're trying to really establish that they also know what they want. So you as a parent, you just have to be consistent. Now, and exactly. Let me pick you up on that word. That comes... That you understand when you're in authority and you're, you're very, very serious about what you're saying, that I want you to do it this way. Sit down, take something out from them. You can't watch TV. You need to listen to me. Sit down and listen to me. I am serious about what's going on if you don't listen you're not going to get this they can understand that no toys they sit down mommy what did you say i said that okay mommy then they get to do what you want but you have right. to be consistent patient patient okay. consistent and patient and then you have to have a tone that they understand when you are when you are serious, serious exactly now i won't take you on that with that consistency let's also break it down yeah. when we say consistency so some parents yeah. can understand now i have seen case scenarios where um parents treat the kid the way they feel. So maybe the kid does something wrong, but because you had a good day at the office, you are very happy. One serious alert entered into your account. You just play, ah, go and sit down. And you understand, but the kid did something wrong. Now, at other times, the kid didn't really do anything wrong because you had a very bad day. Your boss, they gave, there was a cut in the office and all that. And then you come home and then you shout on the kid. You use the tone that you would use <laughs> when you are maybe um, dishing up punitive measures. You use that particular tone. So you kind of, you, you start passing some inconsistent or confusing messages to the kid's minds and all of that. Yeah, how, can, yes, so, exactly. How do you, how, how, what do we, what do we tell parents so that they can maintain such consistency irrespective of their emotional state. The, the reason why most parents do that, I mean, this happens even within with, between couples as well. Oh, sorry, they're taking the light. They're going to bring it back, I guess. Can I have a lantern, please? So ah, why, why most parents? It's not a problem. We know it is now. It's not where we are. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> back in Nigeria, so um, <laughs> they're going to bring it back anyway. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, so um, um, the thing is, um, when you do that, you are teaching. You're actually being abusive, emotionally abusive to the child, and the child begins to think that that is how people who love them be and, and behave. So they, 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 they tend to now accept abuse when they grow up because they, they think this is how people who love them, people who are inconsistent, people who are unstable, emotionally unstable. So for me, for as a parent, genuinely, there should be emotional boundaries. Hmm. Seriously. Emotional boundaries in your heart, in your mind, and it has to be a lifestyle. It's not something that you fake. You can't fake it. You have to talk to yourself, have time to maybe have time, I mean, have a session with a coach or a counselor, tell them these are the things I'm struggling with, I need the help with this. And then they, there has to be a change of mindset for that parent to implement what I'm saying. So mm. the emotional boundaries allows that parent not to co continue that abusive cycle of passing down negative emotions. Today you're happy tomorrow. And this happens even between couples too. To, you know, you find some people today, they're happy tomorrow, they're not happy, and they are very unstable in the way they relate to their to their partner and then they pass that down to their children as well hmm. but hmm. if that person that individual comes to terms with the agreement that this is who i am and i want to work on it i know that there's a challenge here this is not how i should relate to people hmm. then they can get the right help and then their mindset can change and they can become more intentional on how they relate to their children and they know that okay i can't be passing down what happened at work to this child how are you doing today and what's your ch i mean your child should be like a regulator like you know, this is in a no no go zone. Like I can't be transparent in it. How are you? How was your day? You relate normal, you know, and then you're still dealing with something, but you have to still relate normal, take care of the child, help the child, be be a parent, like you know, be be a grown up. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. When you came on, uh, I let yeah. out a scream up nepa inside here. 
Uh, yo, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, let me let me give a shout out to them. They are very very, you know, uh, they, are, they, are, they are doing well. They are doing well. They just to let that back. I hope it's not the jet, but hey, no, thank no, you so no, much no, for your insight no, no. on uh, parent, on intentional parenting this morning. We'll continue this next week. Thank you, MM. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you MM. All right. Have a good day. Okay.